How are we doing? Right, today I'm with Dan from Tanvic Tires and Dan's even done his hair specially to be on camera um, and basically there's a tyre swap happening on his tractor and uh, you'll see we've gone from uh, the new Michelin uh, road pattern tyre which is very very interesting to what's more of a standard pattern as you'll know um, so there we go so we'll get, get on with it down we'll see what we did uh, a bit earlier yeah that's all Right, well, I'm here looking at these tyres that Dan's swapping over, as you've seen. Um, and I'm here with Ian Whitwell uh, from Michelin. Um, and there's a couple of questions that come up um, recently on some of the videos. Um, and the first one is about these new road tyres. Well, are they a road tyre? Well, basic, basically, they're predominantly uh, being designed for people who are doing high road mileage, contractors, etc. But there's got to be some compromise as far as being able to uh, go into the field and do the job that the contractor has to do, whether that be spreading uh, liquid waste or whatever, or uh, lime, something like that. So you have to have good traction in the field as well. So, yeah, all right, but I mean, if for sake of argument you had a set of these on just have a little look here you can see the tread I mean they're, they're almost like a well I don't know let me say like a Land Rover tyre almost that is like a massive Land Rover tyre um, but they've still got that agri look to them haven't yeah. they you've, you've still got the agri look to them and if you look one interlocks with the centre and then the next one doesn't the next one interlocks so the back tyres are slightly different to the front tyres we've got these seeps uh, or sites as people call them yeah so that that aids uh, flexibility and gives the heat away for when they're on the road so right. that they, it keeps them cool so they don't wear yeah. as fast we've got these little arrow shaped points here inside which have got two jobs one is uh, to actually aid in cleaning etc yeah. but it, it's one of the first ag tyres that I'm aware of that actually has a wear bar like on a car All right. so yeah, basically yeah. that's an indication to the farmer yeah. that that's how far we're expecting him to run these down before he's expected to change them right. so you'll see that the like most of our other tyres the actual cleats are very uh, vertical in the way they've been sculptured yeah, they don't hang out yeah. they don't so it yeah. has to keep grip throughout the whole life of Tire. Yes. Oh, so we know yeah, if yeah. you're going to be, like you said, carton cake, slurry, um, straw, your hedge cut, and whatever. Obviously, you've got to be looking at something like this as at least an option. Yeah. Yeah. But what about if you were doing general egg? Yeah. And I was saying, well, look, not being funny, I know throughout the winter I'm carton slurry out and whatever, you know, at the lagoon down into another holding tank or whatever or whatever you're doing. Right? You're doing something in the winter. You're running straw around and whatever, but come springtime you want to get on and you want to start ploughing. Simple yes or no, is this a track tie you'd use to go on ploughing? If you were going to do a lot of craft work, it, you would be compromising. So if we do the job, we have one of our uh, test farmers who's, who's done ploughing with it and he says it, it would if you had to do a jack of all trades, uh, it will do that, no problem yeah. at all. Every single one of our customers who We've put them on to test. They're 
initial reaction has been, well, you may as well take those off, these are not going to work. And then within three or four hours, they say, God, these are fantastic tyres. They're quieter on the road, yeah. they've got phenomenal grip, uh, the stability on the road is superb, etc. But remarkably, the infield capability is, is superior to, in certain circumstances to the ordinary open centre. On, on grassland, sometimes when you spread in cake, etc., like you just mentioned, yeah. and you're in a cultivated field, yeah. when they've been really busy, they've had uh, one vehicle spreading with these on, yeah. and another vehicle with Mac with the standard open yeah, centre, yeah. and they're getting hardly a mark with these, maybe an inch or something like that, whereas next door to them, on the same bit of land because they've done it side by side to check, we've got like a four inch footprint left with the Mac Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, makes sense, yeah. So even though they could be running at higher pressures, they, they are leaving a less of an imprint, etc. All right, so, so uh, if, if you got, you know, let's just say you've got your big 300 horsepower draft tractor, which is heavy cultivations and plowing. Yeah. You don't. You wouldn't. You don't need to, do no. you? You'd go for your standard. You would go for something like Mac X Babe in the traditional construction. Yeah. If you wanted the newer construction with the Ultra Flex, which Michelin have in, yes. the, in the casing, yeah. it would be either Axio Babe. We've now got Axio Babe Two, which we extended so that you can get that in medium tractors. But also there's the new Evo Babe, which is the two-in-one tire, which I think you featured yeah, before. Yeah, I've said about them before. Which yeah. is now commercially available from March. Right. But to be fair, Evo bib, I'll stress, unless you've got air inflation system, you're wasting your money. And that is what I'd say, I've, I've seen those, and they're the, basically they're the two-in-one tyre, aren't they? You've That's got, correct, yes. If you've got air inflation, so you can raise and yeah. lower, yeah. you can go up the road, and you can basically, it's almost like folding the sides away and running just on the centre. The, the sides of the tyre actually pick up in the air, yeah. because there's a, there's a gap all the way about here. Yeah acts like a hinge yeah so as you inflate them it bends up takes them away so takes holds them, them away, up and you're just so on the you, road pattern bit. middle two-thirds of the road yep. so you've got a, a central band so you've got plenty of rubber there to give you stability when you've got heavy equipment on the back end like a big subsoil yep. or something like that you've got uh, less contact patch uh, so that it's making it more fuel efficient, yep. etc. And then as soon as you get into the field, if you can drop it down to 1.8, yeah, just let it down, bar. and then shall all. Then you've got the full pan, and then hinges that down virtually, hinge comes down, and you've probably got a 50% bigger imprint, if not 70% bigger imprint than what you had when you were on the road. Um, we are actually in the process of trial and going down as far as 0.4 of a bar, which is about six psi. Now a lot of people will say, well how can you do that when you're in the field? But what you've got to remember is that the, the thing that harms a tyre is, is heat, so it's speed with two lower pressures on the yep. road, yep. but it's also dynamic shock, which is that real thump, it's better with, if, with a heavy load on, like yep. all these people who frustrate the hell out of me with a big plough on the back, and then they've got this ornament. Yeah. I refer to it technically as a transport wheel, but it seems to be an ornament for most people because they don't use it. Yeah. Now, that alters the pressure. Or you can overuse it, Dino. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> now, that massively changes the pressures that your Michelin or any other tyre yeah. manufacturer's agent will t recommend you to use. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I did a video, um, well, I've done a couple last year where people were running at low pressures. One of them was the Case Puma, when I went and saw Henry running his five furrow on land Gregoire Besson. Now, he was running his down at 10. Yeah. Was told by his rep you can go to eight. <coughs> and I mean, it was a lovely bit of ground and whatever, but you could see that there was a big bulge in the tire and it was flexing and I mean, it, it was working well. Then I started getting comments, people going, has he got a puncture or he needs to check his back tires or he'll have them off the rim. Yeah. But he won't, will he? No, no. And he was doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, he was doing exactly the right thing. And, and going back to what I said about efficiency, you just think about it, even if you've got an airline off your brakes, you don't have to have, you know, the fancy expensive seven, eight thousand pound air inflation systems or, or whatever. If you're going to be in a field all day yeah. and you're going to increase your efficiency by 30 percent, 
by just dropping the pressure, say, from 17 psi down to 12 or something like that, yep. you're probably going to be two hours in front of yourself by the end of the day. So People if you don't took, see that though. You so if you, could, if you took 40 minutes to pump exactly. the air back in from an airline, yeah. you're still in front. People don't see that though. And you've probably saved yourself 25% on fuel as well. I mean, you looked at the bottom of his tyre. You know, rather than if that's the ground, yeah. rather than just a little point being yeah. in contact, he almost had like a, a crawler track. Yeah. Because you know the, the the bottom footprint was was phenomenal. Well, I've shown you a picture of, of the Evo bib, yeah. two in one yeah, tight, yeah, yeah. and the differences yeah. between a road pattern in the sand. And that's again uh, the one that makes it makes hinges, it hinges, and lift itself. Uh, up, yeah. uh, and everybody, the first comment that comes is, well, that's nearly like a quad track print. So this is yeah, yeah, this is it. And I mean, it, it, Henry's was the same. Henry's on grade one silt out in the out in the. Um, fence at Hole Beach way and beautiful ground but like he was saying if you ran your tyres hard yeah. one turn and you're in up you're up to your axle you've got to stay on top and move forward That's all right. the while it's all about you know. not creating what I call a bow wave by sinking in exactly. because you're always climbing out of a hole and if yeah. you're climbing out of a hole you're using energy and the, and the biggest problem that we've got and this isn't just particular to, to Michelin it's, it's all the different manufacturers um, some of the medium sized tractors now we have to uh, manufacture the front tyres uh, a lot lot stronger than they used to be and this is because they've got to cope with the horsepower as well as the weight of front implements etc. And carrying their bleeding dinner box around you know about four tonne of dinner box and, and two spanners on the front always. What's that all about? Well you know I, I, it, funnily enough, I look at all of these big sort of fancy toolbox weights and all the rest of it, and in a way, to start with, they, they were actually a negative thing from my perspective. But with your new... Because they weren't heavy enough. Exactly. Until we started putting the big slab of, of uh, cast iron on the bottom, a slab weight, yeah. because the, the majority of medium-sized tractors, say if you're in the Mac X bib or Axio bib range yeah. now, um, you have to have a minimum of two tons per tyre. That's four tons to because the front axle get them to, to work. actually make the tyre flex as it's been designed. But at four tons, that's still only at nine psi. Right. So what we're doing is we're going round and we're seeing people who've got 17, 18 psi in the front tyres. As soon as they hitch a, a trailer uh, or a tanker on the back, the yeah. first thing they think of is take weight off. Yeah. They've got no. They've got a complete imbalance because yeah. everything's to the back. They're lucky if they've got a thousand kilograms per tire on the front. Yeah. So they've half the weight that the tire's been designed to work at, and they've probably got four or six times too much pressure. Yeah, but surely that's the way to do it. Isn't it? You've just got you've gone on a trailer. You're on the road, and the last thing you want to do is stick all the weight, run it, and you're going to just wear your tires up, isn't it? Surely. No, because what happens is that the tire doesn't flex, so it skips around, and you'll get on the as you're looking from the back of the uh, tractor, the left hand. Uh, lugs, they were way way in and out. Scalloping. Yeah, scalloping in and that, and that is a absolute hundred percent uh, evidence of too much pressure for the weight that it's there. Because well, the tyre is not flexing, and that will happen with any main manufacturer tyre. Because I'm still thinking of how it used to be. Go back to the, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago with the tyres available. Then yeah. get your weight off, get you know, yeah. get the pressures up beyond the road. But, but the now you're saying they're a different type of compound and design. Well, it's different structure, etc. Because they're not, they didn't have to carry as much weight in those days. So now they've been designed for the weight. If you yeah. start then going up the road, take the weight off, you're yeah. actually doing more of a disservice to it. And what my recommendations is, without virtually looking at any tractors they should have a minimum of a ton weight on a linkage because I'm took I'm in, uh, including the half yep. a ton transfer weight in yeah, this yeah. and you need a minimum of a ton weight all the time on the front end if you've got something like Mac X bibs or that, I just Axio didn't want to hear that I mean that's what I always tell people don't be but with yeah. modern design exactly. that's what you got to do yeah, yeah. so there you are they, they don't say you never learn anything on here I just, you just learnt that you boys with your bloody great big dinner bags and all that on the front of your tractors, you're actually doing the right thing. To a point though, is you've got to get it right Yeah, you? yeah. You can't yeah, overload it, yeah. then you're getting that tyre, yeah. it'll actually sort of basically flex, flex and level itself out, you're yeah. going to stop scalloping and stuff like that. Yeah. Well there you are then. Yeah, and you'll get, you, you know, your good hours out of it, you know, four or five thousand hours, no problem at all. Fantastic.
and flap level there. So you heard it here first then, boys. Didn't want you to hear it, actually, but you've heard it here first. So Great, good stuff. So, you've seen two different types of tyre. Dan, are you ready to start knocking this other one over there? And Yeah, I'm just waiting for you guest baggers. There we are, look, see? <laughs> anyway, right, we'll best have a look at this thing. She's on. Top man. Right, so you've completed it, Dan. Well yeah. done. Did it. Bit of graft. Yeah, it was a bit of sweating. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Ian, for all the info. Not a problem. Um, as I said, I think that's something I'd certainly like to come and have a look at and see them actually in the field working. Yeah. You know. Just to show it, so I don't think you can say as much as you like. I think the proof is always in the pudding, isn't it? Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so fantastic, thank you very much. As I said, thanks for taking the effort and doing your hair, Dan. You're looking lovely. Um, you know, three hours in makeup, yeah, believe it, would hours, you? Yeah, but anyway, just, just remember also that uh, on the Michelin Twitter feed, there is um, you can ask an expert. Yeah, that's something so, you said earlier. So, Mitch and I have actually got a Twitter feed. I don't use Twitter, you know, but they have got one. And you can actually ask, if you've got an issue with a Mitch and tyre, yeah. they'll get back to you. And then, as I said, if, if they can't answer it there and then, they'll actually get in touch with you and come out and see you. And that's yeah. part of the service that you provide. That's correct. Yeah. Which is very, very good. Um, as you know, though, you can get me on Snapchat and Instagram, and obviously on Facebook. And you know what that is, Snapchat and Instagram is LordMuck4890 and Facebook is PodgeMuck. So there we are, right. Thank you all for watching. Hope you learned something. Have a good week. Look at yourselves and mind how you go.